I give myself away so you can use me. Hello, welcome to Sunday School. I'm so glad that you're here today. I have got permission to use Professor Jones's lab today because I have got an awesome experiment that I am working on. I'm trying to figure out how to help my friend Bob. See, Bob's got a few problems. Bob only obeys when he wants to. And I've got to figure something out so that Bob obeys. So trying to figure some stuff out, get my calculations right and see what we can do. So we'll learn more about Bob in a minute. But first thing we always do when we come to Sunday school is we, you got it, we pray. So let's all bow our heads, close our eyes and let's ask Jesus to help us have an awesome time today, okay? Jesus, we love you so much, and we're so thankful that we can come to Sunday school and that we can learn more about you. Jesus, you have a special message today that you want us to hear. So I ask that every boy, every girl, every mom, every dad, everyone that's watching Sunday school today, that their hearts would be open and they would hear and learn what you would want them to know. And we ask it today in Jesus name. Now, did you hear the song that I was singing earlier? That is a song that has been on my mind and heart all week long. And I just find myself singing it when I'm doing stuff at work, in the lab. So I think that I wanna share it with you today so you can learn it. And I have a special guest today who is gonna help me. Are you ready? All right, give me one moment. I'm gonna get our special guest. Give All right. myself well, away. we are here for worship time now, and I've got my special guest Elijah with me, who is going to sing with us today. So let's just worship away. as I teach you this song so that's been on my heart this week that I've been singing. You. It's called "I Give Myself I give Away." Myself away.
you like to draw? I do. Hmm, who are you drawing a picture of? Uh, J.C. Haywood, a real hero of the faith. We learn about heroes of the faith here. That is awesome. So J.T. Haywood is who you're drawing? Yeah. Wonderful. What do you know about him that makes him a hero of the faith? Um, he grew up in Indian in Indiana and he moved to Indianapolis when at the age of three and when he got to high school he wanted to be a cartoonist and he wrote pictures of him on the newspaper and people said when they saw his pictures that he said they said that uh, he is the best drawer of his Time. Wow, he was a cartoonist, and when people looked at his drawings, they said he was the best of his time? Uh -huh. That is awesome. What else do you know about him? Anything? Uh, no. Huh. Well, do you know what I know about G.T. Haywood? I know a few things about him that maybe I could share with you while you're drawing his picture. Do you like that? Yeah. Awesome. So, G.T. Haywood was a real hero of the faith, just like you said, because not only when he graduated from high school and he got his job as a cartoonist, and he was the best cartoonist of his day, it wasn't very long after that he quit the newspaper that he began working in a factory. And when he did, his life was forever changed. Can you guess what happened? No. Aha. He met a man on his job, and this man had had something happen to him the day before. This man had gone to church, and at this church, they preached Acts 2.38, and nobody in their town had heard this message before. But in this message, they were telling them to repent and to be baptized in Jesus' name, and that you would receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when G.T. Haywood was invited with this man to go to church, he did, and his wife went. And while they were there and they were listening to the preacher and he was preaching, something started happening on the inside of G.T. Haywood's heart. He wanted to go pray. But have you ever wanted to do something but you just felt like, oh, not sure? Well, his friend came and said, would you like me to go to the altar up front and pray with you? And he said, yes, he would. So they went up there and he prayed and he received the gift of the Holy Ghost and his life was forever changed. And G.T. Haywood, it didn't stop there. He would read his Bible. You read your Bible, right? Yeah. Have you ever read something in the Bible that you didn't quite understand? Um, yeah. Sometimes? I do sometimes. And so what G.T. Haywood did is he would pray about it and he would say, Jesus, what does this really mean? And the Lord would talk to him. And one day G.T. Haywood 
heard the Lord speak to him and told him that baptism in Jesus name and he began to study about baptism in Jesus name and GT Haywood realized that as he began to study and read the word of God that in the book of Acts do you know that no one was ever baptized when they put him down in the water saying Father Son and Holy Ghost but only were they baptized in Jesus' name. And G.T. Haywood, when he saw that in the Bible, he said, that is the way you should be baptized because that's what the word says. And so any time that he baptized anybody because he became a preacher, it was always in Jesus' name. And just like in the Bible, whenever some people saw things or heard things they didn't like, they kind of got a little upset. There were people that G.T. Haywood knew that didn't really agree with that baptism and only Jesus' name. And so what happened was is they just stopped being G.T. Haywood's friend. But do you know who G.T. Haywood wanted to be his best friend no matter Jesus. what? You got it. Say it again. Jesus. Jesus. You're right. And so G.T. Haywood, he wanted to make sure that his decisions that he made and the things that he taught people was exactly in the word of God. Sounds like our pastor, doesn't it? Yeah. Pastor Wood, that's what he wants too. And so G.T. Haywood, he loved to sing and he loved to draw. And who drew this picture, Elijah? Um, himself. G.T. Haywood drew this picture of himself? Yeah. That is awesome. He was a very good artist, wasn't he? Yeah. Do you know some songs that he wrote are the very songs we still sing today? And so, oh, G.T. Really? Yes, and G.T. Haywood, he was such an awesome artist that he would draw pictures sometimes as he preached. And in his church in Indianapolis still today, there are pictures that he painted like murals on the wall. Have you ever seen any of those pictures? Mm, yes. <laughs> Whoa, because you did some research on G.T. Haywood to share with us today. And I think, let me think, the picture that I saw was one of G.T. Haywood that he drew, and it was a picture of Jesus, and it was Jesus in the clouds. What's the one you saw? I saw Jesus praying in the garden. Jesus praying in the garden? Awesome. Well, G.T. Haywood is truly a hero of the faith. And let's look at your drawing. Good job. That is awesome, Elijah. Good job. I wonder where they are. I, I don't see anybody over there right now. I think the coast might be clear. I'm going to try it. I, I don't know if I should. I, I, I don't know where they are. Okay, I, I'm just going to try. Okay. I don't see anybody. Okay. The coast is clear. All right. Last week, I came and I told you about what was happening in our city of Antioch. Things have gone awesome, but the reason I was hiding, kind of hanging out by this tree, is because there's some people who don't like what Paul and Barnabas are saying. And I wanted to make sure the coast was clear before that I came out here to talk to you today. So it has been absolutely awesome. There have been so many people who have been listening to Paul and Barnabas, who have been obeying what they have been preaching, as they've been saying, repent. They've been saying, yes, I want to get all the sin out of my heart. As they've been saying, be baptized in Jesus' name. They've been saying, take me down to the river. I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Get all those sins washed away. And then as they sang their worship songs, there has been people who've been raising their hands and worshiping. And as they do, 
something beautiful happens. All of a sudden, they go from singing their songs that they're singing to singing and worshiping in a language they never learned. That's how they know that Jesus is coming into their heart to be their friend. And it has been not just one person or two people. But you see, see, look, it's just like this. One person tells their friend, who tells another friend, who tells another friend, and pretty soon it is a huge group of people who are coming and who are learning more and more about Jesus. My story is in Acts 13, and it says in there that the whole city came to hear Paul and Barnabas. Can you imagine our whole city coming to church? Wouldn't that be wonderful? We would have to be outside because it wouldn't hold everybody in the church. I don't even think that all of the ground that we have around the church would hold the whole city, but it sure would be nice if the whole city came to church. And that's what's happening in my city of Antioch. The whole city came out to church. But not everybody who came out, like I said earlier, wanted to hear about Jesus. And Paul and Barnabas, when they first started saying, stop talking about Jesus, do you know what they did? They prayed for boldness. Maybe I should pray for boldness and not come hiding around a tree. You think? Oh, that's what I need to do is pray for boldness. That's what you need to do because you're going to go some places where not everybody wants to hear about the love of Jesus. But just like Paul and Barnabas, they told them just because you don't want to hear about the love of Jesus and how to change your heart. We're not going to stop telling people because there are people who want to obey and hear what the Bible says. So Paul and Barnabas, they prayed for boldness. And the Bible says after they prayed for boldness, there were more people that came and heard. And it was so many people. It said that the word of God, as they prayed for boldness, they began to preach. And the whole region, that's like the whole state of Illinois. Now, it's hard to imagine the whole town coming to church, but what if the whole state of Illinois, the Bible says the entire region came to church and they heard about the love of Jesus and how to change their life. Some people were just singing, like happened earlier, I think, here in Sunday school, where they're just so happy and they're just singing a song as they're on their job and as they're working. And people would come to them and say, what are you doing? You seem so happy. How can you be so happy when there's stuff going on that maybe is a little scary or some stuff that's going on maybe where people are sad? How can you still be happy? And the people would say, let me tell you, I went to church and there was an experience that I had. Something in my heart changed. And those sins that had been weighing me down, making me sad, I repented of them. And all those sins were forgiven. And I got baptized in Jesus' name. And all my sins were washed away. Just like I had never done it. And then Jesus is now in my heart. Because I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that is how you share the love of Jesus. People see that you're happy and you're excited when really you could be sad or in a bad mood and they want to know why. And so you're able to tell them. So go this week and be a hero of the faith by being kind to someone, by telling someone how much that Jesus loves them. Go and just simply obey. When mom and dad ask you, obey the first time, not after they tell you the third time. That's being a hero of the faith because that's what Jesus would want you to do. You can be a hero of the faith by just singing a song and just sharing a smile to someone. If you're walking down the street with your mom and dad on a walk and you see someone, all you have to do is smile. That's being a hero of the faith. Picking up your room and keeping it clean, that's being a hero of the faith. Don't be like I was earlier and be afraid and be hiding. Be bold because heroes of the faith are bold for Jesus. All right, we're back in the lab and I have got Bob here. Everybody say hi to Bob. 
Hi, Bob. And Bob has been practicing obedience. And he practices obedience by every day talking to Jesus and praying to Jesus, asking Jesus to help him to look at good things, to hear good things, to say good things, do good things with his hand, and go good places. And it makes your heart feel so awesome when you're obedient. But Bob, Bob had some problems with obedience because Bob knew all the rules and he knew he should obey the rules to keep him safe. But Bob only wanted to obey when he felt like it. Have any of you ever just wanted to obey when you felt like it? Well, that isn't the way you obey rules. You obey the rules all the time. So Bob's been practicing to having an obedient heart and obeying the first time. So Bob, I think you can do this, all right? I think, I think you can do this, okay? Here we go, Bob. We're gonna get ready. You ready? Don't be camera shy, okay? Because we're gonna do this. Oh, we have a visitor in the lab. Hello, hero of the faith. Hi. I, have you come to watch Bob? Yes, and I was, support him. And to support him? Yeah. That is awesome because he needs some support because he's only obeyed the rules when he's wanted to. Should we do that? No. When should we obey the rules? The first time. The first time. Okay, so here you go. Obey. There you go. Go down to the bottom. Can you do it? Come on, a little bit more. Oh, good job, Bob. Now, did you remember what you're supposed to do? Very good. And go all the way. I think he's doing it. Awesome. Look, Bob. He was in your corner supporting you, and you did an awesome job. Now, what do you think Bob should do? Let's see if he obeys the first time. What should he do? Stop at the middle and go down and back up. Did you hear what the hero said? He wants you to go down to the middle, stop, go to the bottom, and go back up. See, to be a hero of the faith, we have to practice good listening because our pastor, our Sunday school teachers, our parents, when they get ready to give us instructions of how to obey, we need to be a good listener because that helps us to obey. You got it, Bob? Okay, here we go. Now remember, Obey, Bob. Down to the middle. All right, good. Then you're to go all the way to the bottom. Isn't that what you told him? Yeah. All the way to the bottom. And then what? Back up. All the way back up. Good job, Bob. Awesome. He's a little shy. He kind of keeps turning around. All right, Bob, this is going to be a hard one, okay? You have to really listen to these instructions. Now, we want you to go to the bottom, go to the middle, go to the bottom, and then back up. Do you think he can do it? Yes. Okay, he's in your corner. He's supporting you, Bob. This is gonna show if you're a good listener, Bob, and if you're really practicing that obeying. Okay, ready? You got it? Do you need me to tell you again? I'm not going to. You had to listen the first time. Here you go. Here we go, Bob. You can do it. Middle, bottom, back up, Whoa, remember what you're supposed to do after this? Yeah, you got it. Back down. Good job, Bob. Yes, and then all the way up. Whoa, wasn't that a good listener? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, now, you, let's see if he can listen to you. You give him something that he should do. What should he do? He should go down to the bottom. Okay, you listening, Bob? Being obedient is being a good listener. Go to the bottom. All the way up, and then go to the middle, go back down to the bottom, and go up. Okay, you got that, Bob? Down to the bottom, back to the middle, up, down to the middle, and back down and up. Got it? Okay, here we go. Down to the bottom, Bob. Let's see if you can do it. I know you're getting tired, but you can do it. Down to the bottom, to the middle, back to the bottom. You can do it, Bob. Back to the top. He's almost got it. Then down to the middle, Bob. Do you remember? Here we go. Middle. And then back up. Woohoo! Good job, Bob. All right. Bob is practicing his obedience. And this week, you go be a hero of the faith. 
and you give your life to Jesus and obey, and it will be an awesome week. See you next week.